This is the historic Arkansas Museum nog off where the competition is stiff, but the eggnog is even stiffer. <laughs> well, eggnog is sort of like, you know, Santa Claus is something that's there, you never question, and it uh, shows up around Christmas and then, uh, and then goes away. The place of this story is the kitchen of Bill and Kathy Worthen. One Christmas, some time ago, we were lucky enough to be their guests, and the whole place is filled with aromas of Christmas, which at the Worthen House includes eggnog. One of the very first purveyors of eggnog in Little Rock, Arkansas, in the territorial period, was Nicholas P. Nicholas P. had a hotel and a bar, and he served eggnog, and uh, that is the eggnog uh, with which I grew up. Bill is mighty proud of that, that eggnog, uh, as he should be, but there might be others that are good. And in fact, in my own family, the family I married into, Starr's family, there is a mighty good recipe for eggnog. One of my cousins talked about her old recipe and how good it was. It was the best eggnog according to her. And I thought that interesting that anyone would want to be competitive regarding eggnog. But then I realized that uh, the joy of, uh, of competition over a glass of eggnog is, is delightful. Um, and so a number of us were talking about this issue of good eggnog and better eggnog and um, we thought that maybe there ought to be some kind of competition and George West said, Nog off! I've got the best name for it! It's called the Nog off! A lot of people ask me how we came to name it the first ever nog off or now the 16th ever nog off. The first reason is that we did a lot of research. We found out that there were no nog offs in existence ever. And then the second reason is is that, you know, we were a little commitment phobic and, you know, calling it first annual was too much of a commitment for the staff at the museum at the time. We wanted to make sure that this was something that was fun and that we could actually keep doing for years to come instead of a one-off kind of thing. We uh, gathered up people who had family recipes and uh, that was Bill Worthen making Nicholas Pease, eggnog, his ancestor, and I made William Woodruff's recipe, Star made her family recipe, and there were maybe three or four others. It was a huge hit right off the bat, and lots of people came, and it was really fun. And I won the first year, even though I was sort of the host. It was such a success, we decided to, to make it an annual event. One year, and this is one of my favorite stories, um, our mayor of Little Rock, our then mayor of Little Rock, decided he wanted to enter his eggnog. He was excited to enter and asked, you know, how much does he need to make? Well, I probably, bad idea, asked one of the other competitors how much he needed to make, and I was told four gallons. Well, I've come to realize that it takes at least 10 to 13 gallons to win the nog off. <laughs> so, of course, the mayor ran out, and was not too thrilled about it because he did have an outstanding eggnog that could have won had he made it through the rest of the night. Nicholas P's eggnog has only won one nog off, and that was when our chief competitor ran out a half hour before uh, we did. So uh, that always I, helps. I, I feel, of course, justified in in our victory. Uh, but I do feel, now that I have broadened my horizons, that there are other ways to drink eggnog. The first year, we only had one category for uh, an award, and that was the People's Choice. Uh, the second year, we had a celebrity panel, and we called that one the Taster's Choice. And as we went through the years, we noticed that pretty much the people who were winning were the traditional eggnogs. 
Well, we had a lot of untraditional eggnogs. We had loblolly ice cream. La Pops came and they would do their popsicles. We had chai eggnog. And we thought, well, we really need a category for untraditional eggnog. And we called that one your, not your great, great, great grandfather's eggnog. The reason we did that is because, of course, Bill Worthen, uh, his eggnog is very traditional and it is his great, great, great grandfather's eggnog. Our category last year, we had a celebrity panel of children and they judged our non-alcoholic eggnog and we called that the Egg No Nog Award. That was the first ever nog off and then we had the second ever nog off and I made a Kentucky, an old Kentucky recipe and called it Robert Crittenden eggnog and I won that year too so <laughs> I had to retire so other nogs could win. We began having an opening ceremony that involved just the contestants before all of the visitors arrived and we had the cracking of the first egg which was always really fun and we also gave out our awards for the retiring competitors for the Nogoff started and uh, we've called those awards the Nogger Emerita and they receive a trophy that you can hang around your neck that is actually a collapsible cup that you could choose to sample eggnog with. We've done things like our Got Nog shirts and stickers and, and that whole branding. We've also um, done different memes as they've been popular. We did our uh, Keep Calm and Nog Off um, following that meme. Winning the nog off became a matter of pride and honor, and it became quite competitive. David Burnett the, was the bartender at the Capitol Hotel and then at South on Main, and he won two or three times. And Bridget Ferris uh, had her own family Kentucky recipe, and she won a few times. We've had to come up with ideas to disperse the crowd. Uh, our education staff comes into one of our uh, kitchens, our pioneer kitchens, and makes roasted pecans. We have caroling around a fire pit, and we've done candlelight tours of the oldest house in Little Rock during the Nogoff. The first year we had the Nogoff, we thought it was a huge success when we had three or four hundred people in a two-hour period, but the last couple of Nogoffs, the crowds have popped out at like 1200 and the line was all the way around the corner. P. Allen Smith was a judge uh, a couple of years and he did a TV program on it and a radio program on it. We've been in Southern Living Magazine, we've been in Garden Gun Magazine, we've been in uh, Food Network Magazine, I don't know if you can see this, but um, Paula Dean's on the cover and the Nogoff is right inside. A knockoff Nogoffs are just what they sound like. They are uh, usually a feeble attempts at really recreating uh, what Ham has been doing low these many years. But you know, going back to my philosophy of eggnog, if these knockoff nogoffs contribute to the conviviality of a gathering of people in any way at all, then we affirm them and we support their activities and we wish them long lives. First there were people in town and then in Fayetteville and then now there are nogoffs in Longmont, Colorado and Portland, Oregon and Baltimore, Maryland and even one in Alberta, Canada. We've got the Brownlee House on the grounds of Historic Arkansas. He built that house after he had been in Little Rock for a while, but he had just arrived in Arkansas, as it turns out, in 1837, and he arrives in Napoleon, Arkansas, on Christmas Eve night. He remembers in his memoir that he writes much later, we came down the stairs in the morning. We were invited to take eggnog, which, by the way, was not hard to take. So that's 1837, so it's, it's been in Arkansas since forever. And hopefully it will stay the, the Nogoff 
will stay alive and well at Historic Arkansas Museum for the next forever.